let's begin today's episode with a hypothetical question. What if I told you guys that I got a job at McDonald's temporarily over the summer in order to be able to have an official McDonald's uniform to wear during a video about McDonald's games? Because I would be lying to you. About the... to have it for a game part. I mean, I did... I did work there. We all work there eventually. It's just how life works. Yes, it would seem most humans can't get through life without spending at least a short period of time under the enslavement of McDonald's. And really, who could say no to this face? If your answer was, not video game companies prior to the year 2000, that's incredibly specific, but hey, since you bought it up, segue into McKids! So one night, two kids are camping out in the backyard, the most natural of camping habitats, reading a book. Oh, uh, oh. Hey, what you guys reading there? Rough translation, Ronald was showing off his magic bag at a picnic in the meadow. Nope. Help! Help! The Hamburglar has run off with my magic bag! Good, that's great. He can fucking keep it. I hope he enjoys it. If you come back to my house with four cards, I will show you how to get to Birdie's house! He was being serious about those cards, huh? Well, better get started, I guess. <sighs> well, that's enough adventuring for one day. I am exhausted. What the ha what What are you still doing here? You got nothing better going on? Are you not the face of the world's number one fast food chain with like 35,000 restaurants you gotta go get back to, maybe? Well, that's what I thought too, but every time you try to go back, Ronald runs up and stops you before you can make it through the front door to go call 911, reminding you how much you really have to get his cards to see Birdie, who I still don't recall asking about. Well, at this point, I'm pretty sure my parents are being held hostage in the living room, so for the time being, I gotta go do what this clown wants. I'll get straight to the most obvious bit and get it over and done with. This game reeks of Super Mario Bros. 3. The jumping sound effects, the backgrounds, the platforms, the world map, and even the kid's stance and posture looks like Mario's after he collects a mushroom. But, I mean, you know, there's a couple minor differences. For example, Super Mario Bros. 3 was the third best-selling Nintendo Entertainment System video game of all time, selling 18 million copies worldwide, widely acclaimed by many professional critics, re-released and remade on many platforms since, often cited as one of the greatest video games of all time alongside games like Ocarina of Time, Chrono Trigger, Metal Gear Solid, etc. Completely revolutionized the gaming scene and set the bar for all future 2D platformers to aspire to, the same exact bar that had already been previously set by the first Super Mario Bros. game. And in Mink Kids, you can do a little dance. <laughs> So, you have to run around and find cards. That's it. Just getting to the end of the stage will let you go on to the next one until you have all the stages in a single world unlocked, but the game won't let you go on to the next world until you have enough cards in order to be able to successfully complete hostage negotiations with Ronald. Some cards are piss easy to locate. Others are hidden so obscurely, I was unaware I missed any until I hit the end and the game said, yeah, dumbass, you missed a few. Whatever. You don't need them all. Only a set amount, so I only got as many as I needed anyway. But for those going for 100% completion... Not that I know why you'd want to. But if you are, good luck, because to do so you have to contend with a lot of dumb shit. The controls are extremely awkward. It's one of those you have to play it yourself to understand kinds of things, and yeah, I'm sorry, that's a massive cop-out, but seriously. The slippery controls can also make jumping between platforms a pain, especially when you have to make intricate jumps like this one. Then, they just flat out troll you. Your first instinct when you come across these arrow thingies for the first time is to touch them to see what they do. <laughs> That joke in Pixels, it was the very, very first joke in the entire movie, where that old lady was saying yoo-hoo to a couple of kids, yoo-hoo as in hello, while holding up a bottle of yoo-hoo as in the chocolate drink. Man, what a, what a great joke to open your movie with. It was such a good opening joke. It inspired this next joke I wrote. I'm going to hold up an issue of Mad, as in the magazine Mad, and I'm going to say, I'm absolutely fucking livid. 
The only way to kill enemies is by throwing blocks at them, but you usually have to be very exact with your aim. Jumping on them doesn't work. You'll wish it did, especially when you think you got them and then they respawn off screen and you get a game over and you have to start the whole game from the beginning! Hey, I see you don't have my cards. That's okay. Your father didn't need legs anyway. Birdie's next. I still didn't ask! Let's move on to Donald Land. This was released exclusively in Japan for the Famicom. If you don't push start immediately on the first screen, Ronald, or Donald in Japan, I guess, decides he's not waiting around for your slow ass and starts introducing the cast of the game. Introducing Mayor McCheese, Fry Guys, Fry Guys, Fry Guys, Captain Shrek with a mustache, Purple Poop. The fuck? Ah, that was nothing to be alarmed about. Let's keep going. Uh, professor! Still didn't ask. Green Poop! Big Mac Police! Freeze, you little shit! This is the Big Mac Police! You're under arrest for crimes against the Big Mac Federation! It wasn't me! I'm being set up! It was that bitch Wendy, I swear! Then this thing suddenly falls out of the sky and Donald immediately decides he's had enough of this shit and... Moonwalks away. Mickey D's has got my lover Oh, she's just a girl Claims that I ordered one Oh, but the kids me is not my sons ba 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 Oh, yeah, okay. I, I see exactly how it is. I placed you at the start of the introduction. You were the one I led my game in with. I didn't even show up till after the 57 ball sacks with legs. And you're just gonna say good luck and run out the cash you check? The first thing you figure out Donald can do is throw exploding apples. That's not even remotely weird. Touché. The controls in this game fare slightly better than McKid's, but there's still that problem where you can jump on enemies to kill them, so you have to use your exploding apples, which, like the blocks, take a lot of good aim. Oh, what, what, a, a boss? Already? Ah, oh, gee, I wasn't ready for the. D what? D did did I win? Th that that was it. Yes, actually, you can help me, ma'am, by telling me what the hell just happened! And I'll take a side order of McNuggets to go. Um, excuse me. Can we get a slow-mo replay on that, please? And what's with this music? This isn't game over music. This is Kirby winning a round of Smash Brothers. The winner is Kirby! Okay, let's see. Uh, what other random shit that has nothing to do with the McDonald's brand can we find? Ah, yes. Pusheen wearing a robe and throwing marbles. How could I possibly forget? McDonald's Treasure Land Adventure for the Sega Genesis! One day, as Ronald was walking in the magical forest, stoned so much out of his mind I'm starting to wonder if all that white powder is makeup, he found a small piece of paper under a big tree. It was a piece of a treasure map. What Ronald didn't know was that three bad guys each had a piece of the map. One of the bad guys was a giant pair of lips wearing a pirate hat. And th this one isn't a joke. Uh, Captain Shrek with a mustache was a joke. I, I actually think this is this is the genuine article. This game is actually not that bad. Not bad at all. Right away, its cheery visuals, bright colors, and upbeat music make it feel very inviting. Ronald thankfully ditched the exploding apples this time around and instead brought along... Not makeup. Ronald also has a... I'm not sure what the hell this is supposed to be exactly, but it's used to hang on to and scale up latches. It's a little bit wonky though. The controls are otherwise solid enough, but sometimes this thing's a pain in the ass to time correctly. There's also shops Ronald can periodically run across to purchase health, lives, and the like. Ronald looks completely indifferent about this store, like, eh, I've seen better. Further into the first world, I found a boxed up room with a hamburglar inside. It looked like you could go in, but I couldn't figure out how. 
It has a latch on the inside to get out, implying you can get inside in the first place, as well as a welcome sign with a glowing arrow. But then right next to all that is a giant heart saying, don't touch? Two completely contradictory statements here, Hamburglar. I beat the first world's boss, who was sadly the one I wanted to fight the least, judging from appearance alone. But hey, what are you gonna do? The boss surrenders his portion of the map and admits defeat. You can tell, because no one struts their ass out quite like that if they just lost. I stopped my playthrough here, but if this was the only one I was doing an episode on, I actually probably would have played it all the way through. It genuinely caught me off guard in a good way. For a licensed game, not too shabby. It fails as an advertisement for McDonald's, though. I mean, look. Who? But as far as a game is concerned, again, solid outing. It certainly helps it was made by Treasure, who'd later go on to prove themselves with games like Sin and Punishment, Wario World, Gunstar Heroes, and Ikaruga. And really, that's actually kind of it. I know, I'm honestly surprised too. If ever there was a franchise's door for shovelware to come knocking on, it would be McDonald's door. I know I kinda made it sound like there was more McDonald's games than that at the beginning of this video, but really it was just an excuse for me to use this picture. The only other two McDonald's games of any remote noteworthiness are Donald No Magical World for the Sega Game Gear, which is basically a shitty, boring, handheld version of Treasure Land Adventure, and this one you might have heard of, Mick and Mac as the Global Gladiators, though this one is painfully mediocre at best. Really, I think it only has the cult following it does because of the dumb opening song. Are you, are you, are you ready? Yeah! Cool! Are you ready? Awesome! Yeah! This episode of Smash Master Show has been brought to you by Burger King. Have it your way! Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure to hit the button. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. Also, be sure to give me a follow on Twitter because that is the best place to get general news from me, be it video-related news or just other ramblings in general. I would also love to thank all of my supporters on Patreon. You can see their names on screen right now. Guys, thank you so much. But I will give a vocal shout out to my current top patron, Sarah Alexis. Sarah, thank you so much. I love money. And that that's it. I don't know. I was gonna I was gonna go off into like a whole speech for five for five hours, but I mean that's thank you. Hey, so what I'm trying to say is thank you.